everybody who's listening, not everyone else, and welcome to the Common Briefing Program. Uh, this is part of the Common Geeking Program podcast where a bunch of friends try to stay in touch by talking about the geeky stuff they like, uh, and I run these little shindigs where we try to talk about news. Now, uh, early May, typically pretty busy for folks our age, so it's just going to be Jeff and I this episode. Yes, it is. Um, so, hi, Jeff. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing, you know, it's, uh, it's been like both both a big month big month for news and also like really not a big month for news if that makes sense you know yeah like i, I feel, feel like that, i mm-hmm. i have more stuff than i usually do to to at least mention but less of it is like none of it's like really that mfy. it's mostly just like announcements and stuff like that <laughs> yeah kind of i feel like i've got that vibe in general i just had a conversation with laura on the How You Doing podcast, where she was talking about the roller coaster of buying a house, which l- was actually thrilling for me to listen to. Um, and then I was just like, I've had a ton of tiny little things happen. Uh, and that's just, I don't know, that kind of feels like yeah. the vibe right now. Where yep. what we're going to do, because we don't really have to regiment between multiple people, um, peek behind the curtain, the way that we curate our stuff for the common briefing programs lately has been as we find headlines and sources, we try to drop them into a shared discord. Uh, and then toward the end of the month, we take stock of what we added to the list, what we found interesting, and we pull that into our episode. Now, mostly what I'm just going to be doing is going through this list uh, in chronological order and picking out the things that I think are uh, worth the attention. Jeff, I know you've got a few picked out that you. Uh, yeah, you really I also enjoy. have a few things, a few things that probably didn't make it onto the into our little Discord chat. So go and I'll rogue. just mention those at some Love point. Love to see yeah. it. So before we jump in, I usually start with a vibe check, but I already kind of did that. Uh, we just had a little conversation about the the Haslab <laughs> Unicron thing that you just received. Yeah. Before, so to maybe that... break the format a bit, why don't you tell me, you, you, you teased some news to me in that conversation. Where... Where's this going? Yeah, so, okay, yeah. My, the first thing I did want to talk about is, th- though this is not necessarily uh, news to the world, I, I got my my HasLab Unicron, this thing that we've been talking about on the podcast for the past year and a half, two years, something like that. So uh, that this is kind of like the nice culmination of that story. And uh, just to, to promote a little bit, we just, right before recording this, we recorded a, uh, a little video of kind of me showing Colin that, and uh, that's going to be on my YouTube channel. I'm hoping to release that on the same day that uh, that this episode airs, so uh, you can check that out on Alchemist Prime Reviews. Yeah, um, you, but you pulled the... a big prank on me, and I got uh, <laughs> I chastised uh, by my girlfriend for my reaction to it, so that was fun. <laughs> wouldn't have it any other way but yeah so that that was one of my transformers things is just i did get this product that i've been waiting for for ages um then the other one is uh there is a a new product that was announced this month um that is actually more expensive than haslab unicron uh Part of oh that God. is because it is um, it is officially licensed through a third party company, so it's not actually Hasbro making it. It is a okay, uh, yeah. a separate company, Robosen, Robosen, um, which actually made a similar product years ago, or I don't know if it was ever a product, but they made a similar thing years ago and got kind of sued a little bit by hasbro uh but now they are making it officially in partnership with hasbro um and it it costs seven hundred dollars 699.99 and it is a here's the title of the the product is transformers optimus prime auto converting program programmable robot uh collector's edition of course what the Uh, (laughs) fuck it's basically, and I'm sure, like I've ser- I've personally seen videos of like you know indie similar things, but it's like, uh, it's like you know those those like remote control like pets that we had as a kid that you know yeah. you could program to like walk around and do like little hand signs. Yeah, and say yeah, things. I never had any, but sure, rub it in. Continue. <laughs> well, I I didn't really either much, but <laughs> um, it's basically like that, except like it's it's Optimus Prime, and he can transform himself like through motors and stuff like that and programming like literally can turn from a truck into a into a robot that can walk around and do this is how it starts like goddamn dab and shit like that (laughs) oh my god it's um yeah it's uh it's not like a 
it's not necessarily new in terms of like robotics. Like it's it's a similar product to things before. This is just kind of the first time that that they're they've that ever done it like officially for yeah. yeah. I mean, oh man, I'll are be you look, excited? You should look up here. That. I'll send you a link on the Discord so you can see. Yeah, what it I'll, looks I'll like. I'll that doesn't help our sh- listeners. But. No, but I'll put it in the <laughs> show notes. So if you guys want to take a look, but I'll it was really funny because like uh, at, there was like a um. Basically, like a big Hasbro online event. Uh, I can't remember what the date was. It was like the the sixteenth or something like that. I don't know. Sometime in the last month, where they were showing mm-hmm. off basically basically a bunch of new products for you know a, der- uh, a variety of their properties, like you know Transformers and Power Rangers and Fortnite and etc. Right, and um, in the Transformers panel. They they did like this cutaway and fucking uh, <laughs> Kevin Smith and Jason Mewes were like presenting this product and they were just kind of like geeking out about it. It was really funny. <laughs> I feel like that there would be a lot of authentic uh, reactions out of those folks. Yeah, exactly. So it's yeah, it's it's a neat thing. It's just it's since it's something different that Hasbro yeah. is putting out, you know, in partnership with this other company. I figured it was worth mentioning. It is for sure. Before anyone asks me, no, I'm not going to buy it. <laughs> Let's uh, uh, we'll, we'll get a crowdfunding campaign started. We'll figure oh out my if gosh. it's well, I don't we'll even do I don't even Go-Go really want something. it to be honest. Like it it looks neat, but it's it's like one of those Listen, things that is Jeff, just like you don't Jeff, actually get Jeff, $700 we have our lots worth of entertainment life. out of it. You're the Transformers <laughs> guy in our friend group. <laughs> Therefore, you don't get to choose anymore. You are this. <laughs> oh, boy. But yeah, no, it's it, it looks like a cool thing. It is like in the presentation, they have it like do a superhero pose. They have it dab. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, yeah. And it's got like voice cues that are actually recorded by Peter Cullen, who is, you know, the original voice yeah. in in most of the media, the voice of Optimus Prime. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so that I don't know, just thought it was worth mentioning. It's not fair enough that exciting necessarily, but it's it's something different yeah. that, that they're doing. I've got um, a I I I've, I've got uh personal stakes in some other quasi news. It's geek news, but it's um it's a little broader. It's more tech news. Um uh, last year Apple announced that they were changing the processor architecture and all their Macs from the Intel x86 architecture, which is what they've been using since like 2004, to Mm. ARM-based, which is the architecture in mobile products. I know, a very juicy description of what's happening. Basically, there's a lot of drama because Intel is losing a ton of business because Apple's moving to new architecture. They released the first of these computers uh, in the fall, and people are like, I mean, it's a different architecture, so there are some quirks, but like, it's an incredible boost in performance. Huh, okay. They announced this switch right when I was preparing to buy a new workstation. <laughs> so I was like, fuck, I got to wait <laughs> until they release they, it. And the fir- yeah, when first, are they actually rolling out the first product with this? So the first ones rolled out uh, in the fall, which were MacBooks and a Mac Mini. And I was like, uh-huh. I would like an all-in-one workstation. I was going to buy an iMac. So I waited for them to announce the iMac. That did happen this past month. Uh, I'm not going to go into all the details as big Apple event there's a purple iphone who cares they're putting that new m1 chip in the ipad pro which depending on what the next os does could be revolutionary yeah, we'll I mean, see i think this is how it starts to be real yeah um <laughs> they announced air tags so i could put a little quarter in jeff's pocket and know where he is all the time uh they put did uh, and then they did announce a new imac and it was just not what I was looking for. So basically, I'm in this unfortunate position where the M1 is good, but they don't have enough versions of it to do exactly what I want. So I, mm. but I'm also working on like an eight year old computer and I need right. something new. So I had to buy something. It'll be harder to resell an iMac because it's all in one piece. So I got a Mac Mini, which is their tower, their little tower computer. It's just a small little box and that's the Mac. Uh, and I got a bunch of accessories ordered. But now, the Mac Mini is taking a couple weeks to ship, and sitting a few feet away from me, (laughs) I have about $1,000 worth of awesome computer supplies, and no reason to use them, just burning burning a hole in my soul. I'm staring at it all right now. So, once I get that set up, it'll be delightful, but it'll be a couple weeks. I will be fully vaccinated before I get to set up this workstation. (laughs) So, so this might be a kind of odd question, but them switching to this new system, and I Mm -hmm. don't even know like, does that affect, I guess, backwards compatibility with, like, th- like, so, like, no, uh, that is, 
That is a good question. Generally, yes. Windows has a specific ARM version of their architecture. Uh, I forget uh -huh. what ARM stands for. It is just the microcircuitry architecture. Um, we don't have to worry about compatibility as much in most other places because everything runs on that x86 system. Yeah. Windows has their tablets that some run on this ARM version of Windows, and apparently the backwards compatibility solution, which is emulating the x86 mm. architecture inside Oof. of ARM, which we see That's that annoying. in games all the time. They have to emulate <laughs> the old system in the new one yeah. to get it to run. And apparently that emulation is crap. Great. The emulation in the Mac version, everybody is like, it is in some cases the same and in some cases better than running hmm. natively on x86 architecture. The problem is uh, for some audio stuff that I'll be doing, like certain plugins, certain like indiv small things might not be supported. But yeah. like... People are saying that the plug and play out of the box on the Max is mostly not an issue. You're only going to run into this problem when you're dealing with like gaming, which who's buying a Mac for gaming uh, or <laughs> serious production, in which case most of it works. Uh, yeah. But there are just like some third party anomalies that don't. But like it's already there. You can already get native versions of all this stuff. The thing is, our mobile devices have been running off this architecture for years. So you can like run iPhone and iPad apps just on the Mac basic like as is because it's right. the same thing so it's it's a cool bit of tech news that i will be diving into but mostly the timing of it all left me to be staring at a pile of one thousand dollars of stuff that i budgeted for forever ago and now can't <laughs> use so i'm pretty Oof. annoyed but that's fine um but i guess we could sort of pivot out of our own little personal experiences here and get into our list yeah uh, let's talk about some of the some of the announcements and stuff like yeah that. If we want to do this just chronologically, I feel like it might mm -hmm. be cleaner to to talk about all of the Marvel stuff at once because I know that was kind of interspersed throughout here. Yeah. Yeah, so we got we got a few things going on. We got uh, a trailer for Shang-Chi, mm -hmm. which I I think looks pretty good personally. Mm -hmm. Um not a lot to go on yet cuz it's just kind of a teaser trailer, but yeah, that, that I think that looks fun. Um yeah. we had the wrap up of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And then after that, I don't know if there was actually an announcement about it or just kind of like, you know, people could see based on like what was being planned on IMDb or whatever. They're making a uh, a Captain America 4 that is, oh, by the way, spoilers for the end of Falcon and the Winter Soldier, but uh, that is starring Anthony Mackie as as the new Captain yeah. America. Uh, um, because was that actually like, did they actually officially I'm, announce that? It's or? weird because uh, the, the initial headlines I saw for it were saying like, it's confirmed. And then I saw yeah. follow-up headlines that were, it's a rumor. So I honestly haven't been able to nail it down. Huh. Um, gotcha. Anthony Mackie reportedly said that he found out about it by being in a grocery store and the cashier was like, <laughs> yo man, is this true? Uh, That's so, really I mean, funny. It might, yeah, so it might probably, just be I mean, a, a story it could be one of those things where it's like, you know, we've known that they've been doing the internals for a while now, but, you know, yeah. they, you know, actually put out footage of it today. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> and because we might not be doing a full Falcon uh, Winter Soldier episode the way we did for WandaVision. So many spoilers right here. Right. I think initial impressions, Jeff, I know you were a little cooler on it than I was. Like, despite some of, like, the... I don't think it resolved a lot of its side threads very well, but as far as, like, the core yeah. of the show, uh, I really, really liked it. I had more fun watching it than I did WandaVision. Yeah, see, I, personally, I'm the other way. Like, mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed WandaVision a lot more. I really did like Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Mm -hmm. It's just I felt a little bit more of the, like, you know, uh, like things getting shifted around due to COVID in this one. And yeah. I'm just assuming that some of the problems that I had are, you know, like COVID things because, like, usually there's just, like, a, 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 a certain number of, like, unpolished kind of things that, like, I'm not yeah. used to there really being in Marvel as much, so I'm assuming that it was, like, COVID-related so stuff or just, like, I can speak pacing to that issues. And... Yeah, I can speak to that a little bit. They were about 75%. This is all from, sourced from Marvel themselves. They were about 70, yeah. 75% of the way through shooting. Uh, they had planned to shoot in Puerto Rico, and then there were mm -hmm. earthquakes, and they had the last minute move to uh, move to Prague, and then like a week into shooting in Prague, pandemic shut them down. What? Gotcha. So. As far as I'm aware, there weren't any needs for reshoots because they were able to get production back up and running and get all the stuff they needed. And that's but that's I kind know of the that thing they did that take I felt. time in the downtime where they like did 
like go back and edit some script stuff so some of the disjointedness might not have been like what we saw with star trek discovery season three where there are some rough (laughs) edges around where they couldn't get the material but it seems like maybe some reorientation that left i suspect may have left some of the rough edges that you're picking up on yeah i mean some of it were like there were scenes where i sort of felt like there probably should have been a reshoot or something like that Mm -hmm. where it's just like you know, lines don't really land in the same way. And like, you know, like the one that I'm thinking of in particular is that last scene with, uh, with, uh, what's her name? Julia Louis-Dreyfus and, yeah. uh, and, and, uh, that was Wyatt a, Russell. That, it's that like, was a cheesy line like, anyway, but. No, no, it wasn't just the line. It was just like some of those things where it's just like, uh. Like, oh, I couldn't plan this better if I planned it myself. Or did I? No, I didn't. But did I? Oh, I didn't. But did I? It was like that, you know, it was like yeah. that particular take of it. I'm just like, I yeah, don't think th- that really. Uh, and that's like. Whether that or is, not it again, worked, that felt to me just like Julia, Julia louis Drive is having as much fun as she wants to have. Sure. But I, I, I'm i like, you know, I'm not like, you know, I'm just picking out a tiny weird sure, example. It's yeah. like a lot of stuff like that where like yeah. lines d- weren't delivered quite to, you know, what I expect them to be from usually from Marvel stuff. Mm-hmm. There was like some of the fight scenes seemed a little less polished, you know, where it felt like, you know, usually in Marvel, I feel like despite the fact that like a lot of the characters are mortals just being tossed around in ways that should break their necks. There was like I noticed more of that in this. So it felt a little bit less hidden, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, but little stuff like that. Ultimately, I did. Hey, hey, spoiler alert again, but somebody did actually get killed by that this time. So that's that's something. (laughs) It did happen. Oh, the uh, Battlestar. The yeah, the shield thing. No, oh, bef- by, oh right, yeah. guy getting kicked right. Yeah, yeah he yeah. got thrown into That's... a wall, and I'm like, why is Spider Man still alive if that can happen? But anyway, well, yeah, um, I mean, Spider Man at least has superpowers, true. so he can do that. He can get thrown around like that, right? True, but yeah. it's you know. But like, yeah. a lot of these cases where it's just, like, you know, it, it exists in other movies, too. Like, every time Captain America's shield hits anybody, yeah. why are they alive why? when yeah. the same shield I can really hit, did. like, a tree and smash into it or, like, break bulletproof glass or, you know what I mean? I really did love the shot where it was when John Walker threw the cap shield and just, like, bonked Zemo in the head. Uh, yeah. Really, like, he didn't hadn't taken the serum at that point. So, like, makes sense that he's alive, but, like, that felt good. I like that. Um... If he had had the serum, though, I would have expected him to be decapitated. But, no, oh, yeah. No, I I, I see your points. I see the flaws in the show. Uh, I'm yeah. very grateful that it adds some context to the MCU. This is one of those things that I think will make me appreciate more MCU stuff. Because after Far From Home, I was just like, all right, I'm good. I'm checked out. WandaVision did not, like, yeah, psych me you. up for the rest. But I think having a, having a show basically say, hey, we're going to try to be a more earnest franchise beyond our own content um mm-hmm. that felt good to me so yeah regardless of quality of show i take that as a beacon of of uh hey maybe this will i mean it's still all run by disney no ethics and capitalism but you know <laughs> yeah no but yeah no it, it, it was a good start and i i am excited to see some of the characters that were introduced and expanded upon yeah um i'm excited to see this cap four if it comes out yeah. or even a second season that might be retitled to be captain america and the winter soldier i I don't know. Well, yeah, um, not to be confused with Captain America, the Winter Soldier. Yeah, which right. inherently <laughs> a confusing title in itself, but that's fine. Um, also, well, it's fine. With, we got Suicide the, Squad and the Suicide Squad. Yeah, I tried explaining <laughs> that to Laura, and she basically told me to fuck off. So yeah, well, I uh, the yeah, as response, far as the other honest. Marvel news, just today as we're recording this, we also got a, like a look to the future with dates for um, the upcoming slate of movies. A lot, yeah. yeah, we got a, a, what is purported to be all of Phase Four. We got a little sneak peek of Eternals. Which did you watch Nomadland when it came out? No, I haven't. It's uh, extremely good. Uh, very good movie, and the fact that that director who just won the Academy Award won, for Best Director... It won Best Picture, didn't it? It did. It just, did it won, just won Best won... Picture, okay. and Chloe Zhao won uh, Best Director. Uh, her movie, The Eternals, is coming out at the end of this year. We finally got a... Oh, she's directing that. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, we got a sneak peek of that with Angelina Jolie and uh, Kumail Nanjiani, but totally shredded, yeah. which is fun. <laughs> you, all you have to do is add him into anything, and I'm immediately sold, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, makes it so much better. <laughs> Uh, do you remember when that picture of Kumail Nanjiani came out with his six-pack and everyone was just like, uh, no way. 
nuh-uh, can't do this. <laughs> how did how did you do this? Like the I remember the Chris Pratt surprise, but this was just yeah, like right. not like what I was If you start working for Disney, you now have enough money to, you know, spend on getting ripped for your job yeah, anyway. So. God, I wish. I've been doing a lot of exercise lately. I can see some of my muscles for the first time ever. Um so if I had Disney money backing me up, maybe it'd be fun. Um, yeah, or like Disney paying you to do that. Exactly. <laughs> hey, can my job be to get ripped and then be funny? I'm good at neither of those things. So the <laughs> uh, we also got a confirmation that the Black Panther sequel, still slated for 2022, is going to be called Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Um, yeah, I'm really interested to see how they... Yeah, because they've... Because it, it, that's a real challenge to like... Mm-hmm narratively do that well and because like just like you know if like if you ignore the actual reality situation you told me like oh yeah we've got a character the main you know the main character is not going to be in it and we're going to have to explain his absence off screen with no footage i'm be like there is no fucking way to make that work ryan coogler writer (laughs) director has said that uh uh, well we've heard a couple of things one this film will address the death of chadwick boseman uh and uh, by Mm -hmm. that i mean probably the death of T'Challa. Or, T'Challa. Yeah. Um, it will not bring him back with CGI, and Good. they will not recast the character. So those yeah. are the three things we know. And I think the most likely thing is that they're going to have Shuri be the Black Panther, right? Because I know there's been yeah. a lot of people that have been kind of wanting that anyway. Yeah. No. There's been a. There's that's been uh, sort of in the cards but we will see we don't really know anything beyond that we just found out the title a couple hours ago uh we got dates for uh dr strange in the multiverse of madness um we got an official date for uh spider-man no way home and uh we also got that we knew that john watts who's been doing the spider-man movies is going to be doing fantastic four uh that now appears that it's going to be at the end of this after guardians volume three i'm sure i'm missing one or two things in there but yeah we Uh, there was the marvels right the yes the marvels which is going to be the captain uh marvel sequel featuring captain marvel ms marvel who's getting her own show and Monica Rambeau, whom we talked about at length in our WandaVision episode. So, yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah. And but I, but yeah. I guess I'll be more excited for that after the Miss Marvel show comes out because yeah. I'm still really pumped for that too. But yeah. as of right now, I was we'll like, see. I don't know, you know. I'm not excited enough to get more from this character who I haven't seen yeah, yet. <laughs> very fair. So, uh, yeah, a lot of news on the Marvel front that just dropped. Uh, I do have some Star Trek news. Um, uh, in in the fiction of Star Trek, on April 5th, 2063, uh, humans made first mm-hmm. contact with Vulcans, and, and that sort of, like, catapulted them into the whole spacefaring show. So okay. now, on April 5th, they're finally realizing hey we have marketing potential here and on april 5th they had a whole marathon (laughs) and set of panels for something called first contact day uh kind of like how star wars has may the fourth be with you they're actually trying to capitalize on having a day and i'm like wow this movie came out in 1996 maybe pick up on this sooner they're just that's really great con because it's five four and four five That's true. That's very good. Uh, So anyway, uh, just to speed through it all, uh, we got reveals on pretty much every upcoming Star Trek property. So uh, Star Trek Picard got confirmed for season two. We got a little teaser that had a lot to do with time. And it seems like maybe regret from Picard as we saw some of his old ships. We saw an hourglass moving in reverse. And then we saw one of the playing cards that Picard played with Data. It was a queen. And it fades away until we just see the letter Q. And we hear the voice of Q from the finale of Star Trek Picard, uh, Star Trek The Next Generation pop up. John DeLancey will be reprising his role as Q in Star Trek Picard, which is a very exciting prospect because he's a very fun character. Uh, Everyone on board seems very excited. Uh, And uh, in some of the interviews that came out around then, uh, Jeff, I know you and I had some problems with the pacing at the end of Star Trek Picard season one. Uh, The... (laughs) pacing i i i think it was the pacing of the last two episodes was bad and made it bad bad yeah um (laughs) i mean i don't i I had issues beyond the pacing yeah or just like i feel like it was very strong like narratively and like written at the beginning of the season and then it kind of yeah defaulted to that sort of like simplified sort of cw kind of vibe uh, that i got at the end where it's just like some things are just like Oh yeah, you made me angry. Therefore, I'm going to decide that it's chill to commit genocide. Yeah, pretty it's much. Just like that's not a realistic thing. That yeah, especially go given how Android or not, given how Sorry. nuanced <laughs> it was up to that point. It was a disappointing, like rushed conclusion. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anyway, exactly, the, one of the yeah. uh, writers, directors, producers, Akiva Goldsman, um, he w- uh, he basically said. 
Yeah, anything that you didn't like is the writer's fault, including me. And uh, we are going oh. to have, he basically copped to it and said, if you didn't like that finale, that's on us. For season two, we are going to map this stuff out much further in advance and try to write it out much more strongly ahead of time. That's so, great. I love it when shows like have like a narrative actually planned out, you know? Like, that's why I like the more bingeable style show. Yeah, yeah. He said ex- he said explicitly, it's on us. We didn't do a good job of that bit. And we know that you need to figure out your act three before you start shooting your act one. So it seems like direct copying yeah. to yeah. the complaints we and others levied uh, to try to improve the structure for season two. Um, to zip through the rest. That's awesome, honestly. Yeah. Like, you don't always, you know, you don't always get that from creators of like, you know, like even if they improve, you don't always get the like, yeah, we understand yeah. the problems that there were. We still haven't gotten a full you know, it, conversation nice from Disney about the rise of Skywalker. So this is refreshing. <laughs> Nor will Nor we. Nor will we. Uh, so yeah, that, Disney, that nice to hear. Disney does not admit mistakes, Colin. They sure don't. <laughs> um, but... Uh, beyond that, we got a teaser for Discovery Season 4. It seems like there's not going to be a villain, but instead an environmental catastrophe, as well as new uniforms or maintaining the future like setting. Yeah, I like that it's not just going to be a bad guy, especially because I think Discovery Season 3 also kind of rushed its villain at the end. I really liked where it was going until the last second it ended, and I was like, eh, could have gone further. Yeah. But I like that it's just going to be problem solving. That feels very Star Trek to me. Uh, what else? We got a teaser for Star Trek Lower Decks Season 2, which had some very fun little Riker jokes in it and it was just a little snappy quick funny cartoon stuff and that's coming out in August. We also for Star Trek Prodigy which is going to be a kids show it's going to be CG on Nickelodeon also Paramount Plus but um, we knew it was going to be about a bunch of kids that like find an abandoned Federation starship and we knew that Kate Mulgrew <laughs> figure out how to fly it. Yeah so <laughs> that was always kind of like it's, they're going to like discover the Federation in their own way and it's it's geared toward kids. We knew Kate Mulgrew who played Captain Janeway for Star Trek Voyager's run uh, was going to uh, be involved in this. What they revealed is that her character is essentially going to be playing a training hologram which is an idea that comes from Voyager. Oh. I really thought you were about to say there, that she was going to be basically like a Star Trek Miss Frizzle. Uh, it kind of feels <laughs> like it, honestly. But no, she's going to be playing a hologram, which if you've seen Voyager, it's a big part of that show. Um, Wait, is she going to be playing a hologram of her of character? Janeway? Yes, of Captain Janeway. Okay. So she'll be voicing a hologram of Captain Janeway. They released the art for it, uh, like some concepts for it and stuff. And um, we've been told that that's going to be coming out in, the, I think, the next year or two. So yeah, over the next two years, we've got a lot of stuff. They're shooting Strange New Worlds, which is the Captain Pike Spock show. That I'm excited for because it's going to be very TOS original series styling where it's just episode of the week. Nice. Um, and that'll be fun. That'll be a night because I like I put on Star Trek in the background when I have nothing else to do. It's hard to put on Star Trek Picard when it's so serialized just in the background. Yeah, it'll be nice to have new Star yeah, Trek that sure. I can just like let run and after I've seen it. Uh, but that's all my Star Trek news. Oh, and we got a confirmed new movie for 2023. Uh, I think we have a writer for it. I do not recall what her name is. Uh, or what she would have done before. Uh, but we are getting a new Star Trek movie. We don't know anything else about it. But yeah, that's nice. that's all the Star Trek news this month. Cool. Yeah, the only, uh, the only other, I mean, we can just keep scrolling down the list. Yeah. The only other thing that I have on my thing to talk mm-hmm. about is uh, today, actually, the day that we're recording this. So, uh, you know, Monday in the same mm-hmm. week. Um, we got the announcement for the next, uh, the next arc of the Adventure Zone. Yeah. The, you know, McElroy brother role role playing podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is going to be Taz Ethersea. Ethersea, Ethersea I believe. I it, Ethersea. it looks like they just shoved those yeah. two words together, but I like that. Um, no, that, I, I looked it up. That's actually like a thing. Oh, I didn't even Ethersea know that that was a uh, that that was a yeah. compound word. It's another. Already. It's like yeah. I I don't. It's like a. It's not like a. It's like a. Uh, what's it, what's it, what would you call Art it? Manto? It's like a a, a geek. Oh, okay. it's not like a word word yeah. it's a bullshit thing that we geeks like to throw like I, I i typed in ether c to google and other stuff before the adventure <laughs> okay. zone came up is basically okay, what i'm saying gotcha. i understand i have that. not looked into it yeah they, yeah. they announced it just they've seen been some like teasing this upcoming yeah. season for a few weeks now as uh adventure zone graduation came to an end which it just did a couple yeah. weeks ago um I maybe I don't know if we should do like an episode on graduation, but there are a lot of a lot of mixed feelings between us about that show. I don't. Yeah, I I don't think it's worth doing a full episode about, especially since like 
I mean, I had issues with graduation and, you know, I don't think that it was quite as successful for some reasons as the other two arcs. But at the end of the day, I I don't really want to like yeah. talk about it too much because like the amount of crap that they and specifically Travis got for yeah. it, I think is just absurdly unwarranted. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the know? people that like scream at the creators like, why did you do this? And he got a lot of shit and for it, it. And it's like, hey, guys, it feels so it feels so bizarre for me specifically with like McElroy content because They're- like the overall tone and vibe that they try to like present to the to their audience and like it seems like mostly yeah they're like some of the nicest folks asterisk in case we learn some new stuff in the future but right it seems like they push forward so much positivity mm-hmm. that like especially earlier on when when they were less popular like the majority of the demographic of people who watched them was just like you know kind of forward thinking like chill people right so to see people get like really vitriolic over like math I don't content, like this not, Dungeons and Dragons as much right. as the old and one. it's not like it's not like oh people are getting mad at the McElroy's because they've done this controversial thing and now we're seeing that they're not as sweet as they seem it's like oh they made some content that is not that you th- probably yeah, that you as didn't good enjoy as, as usual much. i didn't enjoy it as much either. yeah like big one like i also <laughs> they take, don't owe that to you <laughs> i listened to every episode of graduation and i did not enjoy the story as much as i did the others there were highlights i really yeah. enjoyed the finale which aired in april so i feel comfortable categorizing this as april news but um yeah but like i i'm the one that decided to listen to all of it because i care about the yeah. overall product while i am an adventure zone fan that's just like star trek there are bits of star trek that i don't like as much um yeah but uh ether c and that's and that's chill and you know it's also like i i think part of it too right is is the fact that like when they switch to a new dm like mm-hmm. doing travis rather than griffin like a lot of things are going to seem worse where they're in fact just different you mm-hmm. know what i mean like they have very different styles, and I think for for me and for a lot of people, the part of the show that you fall in love with is really kind of the way that Griffin tells stories with, like, these big grand payoffs where it never takes itself too seriously, yada, yada, yeah. like, and all the number of things. And it's like, when we switch over to Travis, it's not even necessarily that he's doing a bad job. I think there are areas in which he could have, you know, like, which he would be the first to say that, you know, should have some improvement or whatever, but, like... A lot of it's just like it's a different vibe that, yeah, I, you know, I don't think they were totally prepared to deal with any of them when they started doing it. Yeah. But, you know, it's like the whole thing is like since balance ended, it's just been like an experimental process yeah. of like trying to get into new things. It's also and, and like and you and I as as fans of these longstanding franchises, you know, we love our Marvel. Yeah, I love my Star Trek. You tolerate my love of Star Trek. Like we it's all <laughs> like we're you and I as I think are most people who be listening to this are familiar with, hey, I love this thing. Here's a new iteration of it. And half the people are like, oh, sweet. I get more of this thing than I like. And the other half of people are yeah. like, I hate you. It's not what it was before. And like, yep. Yep, yep, yep. I, I, I try very hard to be in that first camp. Um, and I think that the people yeah. who are saying like, hey, I don't love graduation are very different from the people who will shit on graduation as much as they did amnesty because they're not the original, yeah. the original adventure zone. And it's just like, yeah. it sucks because the, the conversations that the McElroys have had in like their behind the scenes episodes, they've been super open. Travis has been super like, hey, yeah, I would do these things, these things things differently i agree with you but like those conversations get buried under the weight of screams i hate this and it's just like right i see it with every new star trek like this isn't next gen it's like fuck you of course it's not next gen ended in 1994 it 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 sucks too because it's like especially like the whole thing with the McElroy's, right is that like you know when i watch their content i'm just like these feel like very real and very cool people Mm -hmm. right so like part of what I'm thinking of when I'm watching their content is like, oh, I, I like that, you know, that I'm actually hearing emotions from these people mm. and they're not just putting on these personas necessarily. Um, and so then when like stuff like that happens where like they, they get all this hate for just like making something that's not as popular, then I'm just like, I, I feel for them a bit more where it's just like, yeah. if I, uh, cause like part of what I enjoy about them is like, I can imagine myself in the role of the creator because you know, they're very like down to earth people. So I'm imagining like, oh, like if I was in this position and I was trying to make this content and all these people shit on me, like 
I definitely don't think that I would have had the resilience yeah. to kind of keep going with it. And it would only like it would only be to the detriment of the final yeah. product. You know what to I mean? Sort of, so it's and like, not to say that Dice Populi is anywhere near the scope of the Adventure Zone or that our editor would be. <laughs> but like Dice Populi is such a weird beast because we keep the same story going, but we're always rotating DMs. And every time and I'm the one sort of yeah. like tying it together. And like I'm so happy that we were able to like get the expectation out front saying things are going to feel different with each dm and i think that's been a strength of the show yeah. but as we come to a close and i'm the responsibility is sliding further back toward me i'm just like man i have we have like hundreds of people that we actively engage with and mm -hmm. man i hope that they don't fucking scream at me if i don't do a good job I'm like, I yeah. <laughs> like the people that I interact with so far are super sweet, but a lot of the people were super sweet to the McElroy's too. I'm hoping that this is where our, our, yep. our relative lack of popularity <laughs> will insulate me. Uh, but I'm just like, I, I get being frustrated that you didn't get what you wanted. Yeah. But when else in life right. is it okay to hurt someone because you didn't get what you wanted? You're right. Exactly. It's just like this sort of like internet rage yeah. that you don't necessarily see when people are face to face, at least yep. like not from the same groups of people. Now, right? but when I because like at the end of the day, it's like I think that Travis is a good DM. And I think if I were playing as a player character in the in yeah. the world of graduation, I think it would have been a blast. It just doesn't necessarily translate Agreed. to the same. Yeah. Like listenable content that yeah. the other two did. Yeah. But, but hey, I but either way, I mean, I think we should shift over to talk about Ether C, which is actually the, the yeah. news bit of this, well, right? They're both is news. That, they um, both happened in this past couple no, of weeks. No, for sure, for sure. But, uh, actually, if, if uh, I just, could just sneak something in here real quick, uh, just to dovetail yeah, off ahead. hate speech, uh, Intel did reveal... <laughs> Uh, a, a tool, uh, a software tool that will use oh AI my God, I forgot to about automatically that. <laughs> filter out hate speech while you're playing games online with other people. So you can insulate yourself, I, which month. I would like because I'm out here playing Destiny on my Xbox yeah. and I keep getting messages after games because I use stasis and people hate me for it. But anyway, that's not the same thing Was here. that? Wait, what? was that story this month? Yeah. The whole thing with the sliders? They, yeah, so that's what's oh crazy God. about this, is they have sliders for ableism and body shaming, aggression, LG, uh, LGBTQ plus hate, misogyny. The N-word is a yeah. toggle switch. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's just ridiculous. like, it's, it's just, I, there's not a whole lot to dive into. It's just, it's a really cool yeah. idea and product kneecapped by how fucking funny it is to cram like legitimate social problems <laughs> into a UI for a piece of software. Yeah. <laughs> right. Going <laughs> off of the, uh, going off of the, going back to the McElroy's, like, I do not want to see the Monster Factory episode about yeah. the use of this product. <laughs> no, but also, let's turn the hate speech all the way up on this one. No, it's just but only it's, about it's, very specific things. I think it's a very helpful tool that would be great for people who do who don't have a choice but to potentially encounter these things. But man, being able yeah. to dial in how much misogyny you get in a day is an SNL idea, like for sure. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's very e ether C. <laughs> yeah. So ether C. Um, I mean, the the interesting thing that I wanted to talk about is their for their first few episodes, they're actually playing in a different game engine. Uh, what's it called? The Quiet Year, which is supposedly like a world building engine so they're I... actually going to like flesh out the world organically before they jump into it with like a, a revised version of D&D &D like usual wow, I... and that's a really cool I idea didn't un I, I must have zoned out when I was listening I thought the quiet year was just the name for their world building process I didn't realize it was a whole other like TTRPG related system that that's that's no, very yeah, cool I think so I think that they're playing let me look it up make sure I've got that right yeah no not the quiet year the quiet year um yeah, it's a. It looks like a, I'm not gonna like look into it, but yeah, it's a. It's a. It's a. It's a game system. Yeah, now that's super cool. I didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah, it just seems like a really cool way to do it. And again, it's like you know, getting back into the, like they're kind of experimenting with it to see if it will improve mm -hmm. their own process. And it's just it's, they it's all, cool to they see. They all spoke very highly of it. They said that when they had to stop recording yeah. that part of the show, they were like bummed that they had to stop, which is always a good sign. Yeah, right. But yeah, I mean, most of that is just reiterating what they said in their own shit. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's that's enough about yeah. about the adventure zone. But yeah, it just seemed like some cool. some cool developments yeah. there, and I'm excited for the new one. Same. I'm also excited. We'll be getting a bit of that this month. Um, so another thing that happened this past month, not to be too Star Trek-y here, it's just Star Trek-related adjacent, um, LeVar Burton. 
beloved uh-huh. uh, beloved television presence, uh, famous for uh, the original Roots miniseries as Kunta Kinte, uh, the host yep. of Reading Rainbow, and uh, Jordy LaForge in Star Trek The Next Generation uh, and various other Just cameos. Dude with the visor? Yeah, yep. Right? Uh, ever since okay. the passing of Alex Trebek, uh, what Jeopardy! has been doing the television game show Jeopardy. They have been, because you need me to explain to you what Jeopardy is, Jeopardy has <laughs> uh, been trying out guest hosts ranging from Ken Jennings, whom a lot of people you know remember if they watched him on Jeopardy for eight years straight, uh, all the way down to Dr. Oz. And there was a fan campaign to get LeVar Burton to host Jeopardy. And he is now officially on the list uh, as the final guest host for Jeopardy uh, this season. So he'll be hosting, I believe, a week or two of content. I think he might already be recording it based on some stuff he posted on Twitter. Uh, but that's also gotten him attention. Uh, Ryan Reynolds put him in one of his, uh, uh, I forget what the name of his aviation whiskey or something. Uh, he had LeVar Burton appear in one of his ads. Uh, like it was a real media boom for LeVar Burton and I love it because I think he's a great guy I still listen to like his adult reading rainbow podcast LeVar Burton reads um and I think if he hosted Jeopardy I'd start watching Jeopardy again honestly I think he's (laughs) I like he's just one of the nicest dudes that like people I feel like I've been seeing memes lobbying to put him in the pantheon uh of like public educators along with like Bob Ross and Mr. Rogers and yeah, yeah, yeah. Carl Sagan and that stuff. And I, he is just such a kind and thoughtful person. Uh, again, asterisk, who knows what comes out in the future nowadays, but, um, yeah, <laughs> fingers right. crossed LeVar Burton <laughs> doesn't get God, God, I love the guy. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of cool. Fan campaign got him on it. No idea if it will ever be uh, a permanent gig. Uh, but yeah, that was, that was a big, uh, like social media movement for about a week or two that ended in success. It's awesome. Yeah. That'd be cool. See him as, uh, the the host for Jeopardy. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, other quick things on the list, uh, back in 2013, as how I met your mother was coming to a close. That's not in this month. Yep. As how I met your mother, uh, came to a close. <laughs> there was a, uh, a series that was being planned by the same creators, uh, called how I met your, uh, dad uh, that was ultimately scrapped. And I don't know if that had to do with sort of the mixed, uh, why isn't it how I met your father? It is now because this past okay. <laughs> month we got official confirmation that Hillary Duff will be playing the lead character in a sequel series called How I Met Your Father. Uh, we do not know really anything else about the show, involvement of previous cast, um, but just that this show will exist the, on Hulu. Uh, the, uh, the pornographic spinoff of How I Met Your Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Um, so that's a thing. I'm generally happy about it because I love How I Met Your Mother, and I also liked the finale. Get at me, everyone. Uh, Pat was very not happy with it when uh, we started discussing this information behind the scenes. Um, yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 set photos revealed a uh, a stand-in model for Knuckles, which suggests that in the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog 2 film, not only will we be joined by Tails, which was already confirmed, <laughs> uh, but that the character Knuckles the Echidna, uh, the big strong red boy, is going going to appear as well and unlike the original reveal of sonic uh knuckles looking pretty good if that little statue they have is anything <laughs> well, to yeah. go by i mean they're not gonna you know yeah they make it look <laughs> as bad as the original one but yeah i mean maybe they just had it on maybe they just had it on set for moral support you, well, you can't really the say thing is, in sure some of the pictures <laughs> that he's in the movie <laughs> true. well the thing is for uh next to him they had statues of sonic and tails each matching what we've seen of their movie designs uh, so likely yeah. these are being used for stand-ins. That is the assumption of the internet at large. So for that's sure. why people no, are jumping. Was, that was a yeah. joke. That That's definitely evidence that Knuckles is in the movie. Yeah, so <laughs> it seems like Knuckles is going to be in the movie. Now I need to scroll past this thing where we argued about the definition of sitcom for about a year. Um, <laughs> let's see. I tried my hardest at one point to, to get all of discussions of stuff in the other yeah. discord channel so that we could just have the news in this one no, but... and then here's the discussion where we argued over about whether or not Wyatt Russell is handsome um <laughs> let's see oh destiny I always promise I'll talk about destiny but I don't because I'm so ingrained in it and it's such a dense thing to be into that I yeah. don't want to bog it down uh like if you guys thought that not Jeff and dense, I could go on des- about Marvel and Star Trek and Transformers wait till Austin Pat and I get on the mic about destiny it would it'll be a dis- oh it'll gosh. be a disaster uh but anyway yeah destiny uh being a role-playing based uh shooter 
uh, the the statistics of your character and its effectiveness in combat are based on, to an extent, the gear that you have. And gear has different effects, but also different aesthetics. And they're finally releasing a system colloquially known as transmog, uh, transmogrification, which exists in other role-playing games, uh, called armor synthesis. And this is going to allow you to keep your armor's effects, but change the way it looks to whatever you want. And people have been asking for this mm -hmm. freedom to dress up their character however they want, for all six and a half years, Destiny has been a thing. However, what they did was created a system that's a little convoluted. You have to go kill some people to get some materials and use those materials to buy a bounty and use the bounty to buy another material to make it sort of like a drawn out grindy process where you really have to play to unlock these things. And then they mm. also put a limit on how many times you can do this in a given season, which is usually about three months. Huh. But you can buy them for real money. And that doesn't feel good to a lot of people because there are a lot of times where you sell aesthetic things in a game's virtual space for microtransactions. Um, and, you know, if you buy it, you buy it. If you don't, you don't. Whatever. But this has been such a fan-requested feature since before microtransactions existed. And the limit on how many times you can do this through gameplay is completely arbitrary. There is no in-game gameplay-based reason. It is funneling people, many of whom are already paying for the game, uh, to have to pay for this thing they've been asking for for a long, long time. And a lot of people are upset about yeah. it. There's a lot of reaction saying, hey, for those of us who, like, pay every few months to get the new seasonal content or get the yearly expansions why do we have to fork over another 10 bucks to get some extra armor like yeah there are free to play players and so a popular suggestion has been if you're free to play you're limited if you already pay for the game don't make us pay more for this thing when it's just so transparently right. funneling us into microtransactions uh the yeah. convolution of the system has been like remarked upon but people are pissed that like you can do a little bit but otherwise you got to pay up and so uh bungie did also i think it was this path month announced that they were um they had an initiative to like essentially delete sunset old gear from the game so they didn't have to balance it and people screamed about that mm. enough and they said we're, <laughs> we're undoing it but since this is not gameplay related it's purely aesthetic i don't know if we're gonna see any yeah. any rollbacks so i'm interested to see how that goes well yeah i mean it's just it's, it's a bad taste a lot of people yeah it's yeah not, it's not like thrilled but so the co the costumes don't there it's not like changing it to like a, a pay to win kind of thing right like no you, it is the costume it is purely aesthetic but i will tell you okay a lot of thought goes into the aesthetic of your character and it kind of sucks when you're like yeah. i want to have this ability but i'm gonna be ugly if i have it it's like it's i, not I a feel like feeling. you know like basically to what you said like if they had just included those in the expansions that you're buying anyway, yeah. but then also had a separate option to buy them independently, yes. it, it's that seems like yeah, I seem, that seems like it would make more sense. But. It's the cap that is um, that is really irking people. It's the limit that people yeah. are not liking. Um, I I guess last thing I want to say on behalf of our dear friend Austin. Um, <laughs> Elden Ring. You say that like he's died. Six blurry <laughs> seconds of Elden Ring leak online. Uh, I have not investigated this any further, but he sent us this information. Me neither. Um, one of these days, Austin will so, come back to lament yeah. his frustration with Elden Ring. But yeah. Elden Ring, a topic that we've been on and off talking about for just about as long the as has the Haslab Unicron. Yep. <laughs> but yeah, that was kind of just our list for stuff of the month. Um, I guess let's pivot into ratings here. gonna be a little different because yeah, it's just two of us so what do you think the top story for for april would be if we as an editorial duo are going to tell our listeners of all the things you just heard from us this is the one you should pay attention to what would it be yeah dude this is tough i'm not even sure because like i like i said at the the onset of this episode is like a lot of little yeah. things that like aren't really groundbreaking things on their mm -hmm. own i i'm not sure i could prioritize any of them over the like what do you have any thoughts maybe there's something i'm just forgetting about but i mean i guess if you just lumped in marvel 
Apple's announcements into one thing. Like, that's, I guess, a, a bigger thing, but I don't know. Yeah. It's not even really I, that. I honestly think like that... Like, stuff I'm most excited yeah. for, I'm probably pretty excited for Ethersea, mm -hmm. or Ethersea, rather. I think that might be... But, like, that, that might be very cool just because that's that's coming out... Uh, that will have started by the time this episode releases, so you'll actually be able yeah, to go it, check it out. The first episode will air the day before this one does, I think. Yeah. Right? Um... I mean, if we're talking... I mean, obviously, the most impactful thing for me, it's... and again, like, I've been <laughs> lobbying to get Unicron as a story, but, like, if the story is literally just, I got this product in hand, even though technically it was delivered, like, it last month, like, that's not really a story worth of putting a headline for. <laughs> well, how about this, then? Jeff gets his toy. You have an ambition <laughs> to have the video we recorded about the Unicron thing out uh, about the same day as this episode. I could hard you know. commit you to that and say that that is our top story and you can go check it out yourself <laughs> hopping on the bungee bandwagon it's of driving people to vanity, a specific the vanity that we would have to put <laughs> forth to put our own story quote unquote yeah. story for my yeah. 300 subscriber youtube <laughs> channel as our top story no way so um <laughs> I, honestly, uh, while I like Ether C because of the timeliness, I don't know. <sighs> I think the end of graduation is the context that makes Ether C an interesting and exciting announcement for all the reasons that we yeah. discussed. Um, I, I, and I'd probably say honestly, the the finale of uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Even though we talked a bit about some of the details, like whether or not this show succeeds on its own with all the Marvel info we just got, I think after ten years of people saying, hey, can we get not just token minority characters? Can we get any confirmation that yeah. non-straight, non-cis people are part of this universe? Like, I think that the Falcon yep. and the Winter Soldier is the is the first Marvel MCU property that seems to be willing to have conversations along those lines, and that is what makes me think that investing in these movies in the future is worthwhile for me. So I might just put the finale of Falcon and the Winter Soldier as a platform for all the other news we just got as the thing that I care most about and I think is most uh, intriguing, if not important, over this last month. Yeah, I mean, if you want a quick way to say that, you could just say Captain America and the Winter Soldier, since that's what they uh, called it that's at the, true. in the last that's, uh, episode. That's true. I still will stick to calling it Falcon and the Winter Soldier, because if, if you search Falcon and the Winter Soldier, because there's that's only it, one yeah, word like, difference from Captain America Winter not, Soldier. Not to dredge <laughs> up our definition of sitcom argument, but like there are objective things that they've written down in the app and that's what it is right now so lovely yeah. title screen marvel but you're gonna have to fight me to take away my favorite marvel movie captain america winter soldier is like my favorite <laughs> marvel movie so it's a pretty good one yeah um, I'm a big fan. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my nomination. If you have uh, something to the contrary. No, not really. Yeah, I mean, I, I would I would advocate for uh, Ether C more than that, but I, I'm, I'm content yeah. putting the finale of Falcon and Winter Soldier as yeah. our... Not the strongest yeah. episode of the show, but I think really ties up some important stuff. But I will be listening to Ether C, and if you want to chat about that in our next briefing program, I will happily uh, do a little uh, status check on that with you as well. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Well, that about wraps it up. I hope that only two voices... Uh, was uh, significantly less grating than the typical three or four. You're welcome. Uh, but uh, that that's going to be the end of this common briefing well, program. We'll be back in two weeks with a regular book club style episode where we just dive into a single topic and at the beginning of next month uh, to break down the news for May, the geek news for May. I'll also have my new computer at that point, I hope, and uh, that'll be nice. <laughs> Uh, I've been Colin. You can find me here. Uh, I make a couple other shows that you can find on commongeekingprogram.com. Mostly, I've been just drowning in work and personal projects. How about you, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Oh, I've still been Jeff. Uh, I, you can find me. I've got an Instagram called Things I Wish Existed. Any updates There's on that one? A dot between each word. Nope, okay. Still, <laughs> I haven't uploaded to that in over a year. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a slow uh, visual art year, you know, being in a new apartment on the other side of the country that's very tiny. So I haven't uploaded that in a while, but... You got to get in on those Chadwick Boseman NFTs. Oh my God, don't even get me started on goddamn NFTs again. Uh <laughs> That was a fucking thing. Yeah, no, we did that last month. We're done. Yeah. Um, 
I also have a YouTube channel that I do regularly upload to, and that is called Elkmus Prime Reviews. And uh, hopefully right now there is a, uh, a supplemental video to this episode where we, uh, I look at uh, Unicron. It's not like a full review. So if you're not into that, I think there's still there was, you know, content. Worth. As I may have mentioned before. It does begin with an excellent prank. <laughs> well, they I, I, I recorded a whole bit where I did sort of my own initial reactions mm-hmm. to it. So that the section with Colin does does begin with a prank. <laughs> but um, yeah, so hopefully that's up right now. But if not, it'll it'll be up uh, soon ish. But uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's pretty much all the places you can find me. Yeah. as of right now. Uh huh. And uh, I don't know, this is uh, that we started Common Geeking Program originally just as a project to kind of like stay in touch about recreate the conversations we used to have in Jeff's living room about, you know, Marvel movies, <laughs> Star Wars movies and uh it's everything yeah and and i'm uh i'm really glad that we got to do this i know it's just the two of us but i enjoy these conversations i i hope that that living room vibe comes off to the uh, not an audio just quality but i hope the vibe comes off to uh we can make it if we try just the, the listeners um you and if you're singing something i can't hear it because my tinnitus has been so bad lately that i actually have rain sounds playing <laughs> in my headphones so i'm not just that's okay the recording will be okay <laughs> i'll hear it in editing fantastic Bye, listeners. We'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye. This episode of the Common Briefing Program is hosted by myself, and I was joined by just Jeff Levitt. Uh, This podcast is sponsored by a throbbing pain behind my eyes. I'll get that looked at soon. Uh, the Common Geeking Program in its entirety is created by myself and Jeff Levitt, uh, with all episodes of the Briefing Program like this edited by me, featuring original music also by me. Um, at this point, uh, I do not know if the Alchemist Prime reviews video showing off the Haslab Unicron is up yet, uh, but I will be sure to include that in the show notes, uh, so you can take a look at everything we've talked about down there. So... Talk to us again in a couple of weeks, and thank you for listening to this. Okay, how am I sounding? I'm looking looking like I'm sounding like sound. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking like I'm sounding like sound. Colin Ketchin. Yeah, 2021. I don't. I might. Yeah, my. I'm. My brain's. I'm fine. I just feel like I'm a little. Got a little much going on all at once for a sec.